Hey, and welcome to the Steel Sanctuary Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Barrow from SteelSanctuary.com. With me is Dave, my, my regular co-host. He's not feeling that great, so we brought back up today. We have uh, our buddies Bob Quinn and Zach Franciscus from the Steel City Rings Podcast. Guys, how's it going? Victory three Monday. Victory Monday. The Pittsburgh Steelers are 3-0 and after a 20-10 to win over the Los Angeles Chargers yesterday. Great win. Uh, Dave and I talked about it. This was a big test to see if they could pass this test that now – they get the Colts next week, which should be a win, <laughs> and they could conceivably go 4-0, and but we'll stay in the present and talk about a great game. Um, guys, I don't know about you. This is all about Justin Fields to me. This this game, he was terrific. Exceeding my expectations so far. Yeah, I, I 1,000% agree. I mean, this is kind of what, you know, those of us who were in the Justin Fields camp all along – were hoping for when he when he was signed or traded for uh, by Omar Khan. I the, to me this is his job. I mean I don't see how you can look anyone in the locker room in the eye and give the job back to Russell Wilson at this point. I mean not to mention the fact he's only twenty five. If if I were the Steelers and I know they historically do not do this, I would go to him today and say look. Are you willing to take the Baker Mayfield deal? Three years, $105 million, let's guarantee you half of it. We'll get you on the dotted line right now. And look, it's only three years. You, you can have an awesome couple of years, and then we can renegotiate. If, if he'll even take it at this point, I, I think the better he plays, the longer it goes, the more expensive he gets. He's creating a market, and I do not want to see – him get to the end of the line at the end of the year. Because let's say he does take us to the championship game or the Super Bowl. We have some miracle season. You ain't getting Justin Fields coming off a championship game or a, or, or a Super Bowl appearance for anything less than what they're paying Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott, guys like that. So let's pay him now and, and, and just – Hey, even if he's bad or he turns bad, so what? He's a young quarterback. I'll take him over anybody in the draft who's coming up in the next year. If he's bad, two years we draft Arch Manning. Uh, yeah, if, if he agree. wins was... one playoff game, it's fifty million a season. Yeah, I, I totally just, agree. Just mark it down. That's I won't say much. I'm just gonna say yes, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. I would definitely but, take that deal. I don't know if Justin will, but. Yeah, I would I would offer him that at this point. I I, I would I would say that Justin Fields, if for any reason he thinks, well, maybe I can get money elsewhere, then someone needs to let Justin Field remind him that he has played elsewhere. He has been on teams that has put made him the savior, and he's not that with the Steelers right now. He's winning not just because of Justin Fields. And don't get me wrong, he played remarkably. Like better than I ever thought he was going to play three games in. It's not just because of how he played on that. It was because the obvious progression, like he's growing in front of our eyes and it's remarkable to see there was poise. They mentioned on the, on, on the game, there's footwork and his hip work and ever. It was amazing to see the poise in this young man. So someone needs to go to Justin Fields, tell him to take the money and go to Rooney and say, listen, I understand the tradition. I understand it's a stealer thing. We need to fuck tradition right now, and yeah. we need to sign Justin Fields because I, I, I really get it. And by the way, I think it was Mueller earlier who me and Bob thought uh, he made a mistake. He said that we signed Ben Roethlisberger midseason to one of it. We did not do that. The Steelers have never signed someone to uh, a, an extension midseason, and I think we need to get Justin Fields right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you'll get an argument from anybody the way he's playing right now. I think it's it just – the question is, is he going to take – a lesser deal. Than... The good news is he's been putting up gaudy numbers. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. We talked so about far. this Friday or with you guys. Yeah. I can't remember which, but yeah, that thing I liked was the fact that he's not putting up gaudy numbers right now, which kind of helps that contract situation too, <laughs> where they're winning, but he's not putting up gaudy numbers. So the contract maybe won't kill us if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah I tell you what though, he puts up another couple of these kind of games. And yeah. really, if you think about the plays that got taken away, He's really done this three games in a row. So if he's going to complete 70% of his passes and he's still, if not the best, one of the best running quarterbacks in the NFL, I don't know how you stop him. 
I, I don't. I mean, if Lamar Jackson could pass at 75%, yeah. I don't see how you can beat him. Josh Allen, when he's on and throwing like that, he's he's very hard to beat. The problem is, is with Allen and Jackson is they regress. At some point, Justin Fields will regress, you know, a little bit. He's not going to – I mean, I hope he keeps completing 75% of his passes, but realistically, I mean, he's going to fall back into that – you know, it was 60% in Chicago. If he was just 65 consistent, oh, my gosh, have we got lightning? Oh, you're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and, we're, and we're, we're doing this beat up, too. Remember, we, we have no Isaac Saramala. We have no Troy Flatano. Um, we, we, Jalen Warren's playing one leg. And we locks Alex Highsmith during it. And still, <laughs> the game was the best game I've seen for the Steelers in a long time. Yeah. So we are we are overcoming things. The next man up is real in Pittsburgh. Baby Herbig. Oh my goodness! So the next man up is just the, the, I, I, I scared every cat in my house by standing up and screaming "motherfucking Herbig" as loud as I could at the TV. <laughs> when when you see multiple cats scatter because of yeah, it was so. That is what's impressing me that we are going to keep getting better. We're going to get healthier. We're going to become more cohesive as a unit. I like what you said. Arthur Smith still hasn't determined the identity of this team. He, he's still kind of figuring it out, and we're three and zero along the way. So there's just so much to like about it. Absolutely. I Let's start calling her big baby what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's do some housekeeping before we get into the game. Uh, injuries coming out of this game. Uh, Highsmith was um, hamstring, right? Uh, groin, yeah, I think. An, an MRI. A groin. Right. That's right. Uh, it was gro- Trice. Uh, yeah. No, yep. Trice had the hamstring. Jalen Warren. I don't know. Something's not right. He didn't finish the game. Um, he's still not 100%. Uh, yeah. Jefferson got poked in the eye. They were down at three wide receivers at one point. I want to get to that in a minute. But he came back in. And there was reports today, uh, Nick Farabaugh reported that Najee Harris is walking around with his arm in a sling today. So, Yeah, Brian Batko reported that too. It's, they're, they're, a, they're a beat up unit coming out of that game. That was a very physical, physical game. It was. The physical. Chargers came out worse, if you can believe it. They lost what? Both tackles. They lost Bosa. They got beat up pretty good too. That was that was a war on Sunday. <clears throat> yeah, I love my man Broderick driving both to the ground. He hurt that hip, so I it, well, I'm sure it wasn't his intention to hurt him. No, of course. But I was. really love that the first like real pass rush fields drops back. You saw Broderick ride him way out of the play and drove him to the no, ground. He, he was sending a message, right? No doubt. <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. Now, it, that was a great clip that, that's circulating around Twitter. If you haven't seen it. Uh, Broderick Jones buried Joey Bosa, really just planted him in the ground. Um, Troy Fuatano is out for the season now. This is it's terrible because he played he probably he played really well that that one game he started. This is this is a setback. There's, there's no way around it. I mean, it's your first round pick. He, he was playing very well. Um, I want to get you guys uh, thought on this, and I tweeted it, and I know I'm driving Dave crazy with this, but the Willingness of Omar Khan to draft guys with injury red flags. Uh, it, it's it's coming back to bite him in the ass a little bit. You can't uh, help yourself, can you? I can't. I can't. Well, because... it, 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 it's, it's important to say really, really quick, and I think Nick Farabaugh uh, said this on Twitter back and forth. <clears throat> the red flags on Fowertano were not short-term injury concerns. It was a long-term career-shortened kind of red flag. So we, we have to make sure – that what we're talking about right now, I don't think is the same thing because we can't look at the span of his career. So it wasn't a Darnell Washington kind of thing where we were, or, or, or maybe a George Pickens kind of thing where we were worried about a possible re-injury right away. This was a, you are drafting a guy that's not going to have a long, a long career compared to other guys like him. So uh, he's potentially to, to me, I, injured, which he did. Yes. Yeah, so he's been injured twice so, since in, so, in three games. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, uh, and we're week three. I, you look back at it, I'm really surprised. I, I was surprised when we drafted him a Pac-10 tackle, uh, uh, Pac-12 or whatever the heck. The guy, I think it's the Pac-2 right now. Yeah, it's um, right now. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Washington State and Oregon State, I think, are the only teams left. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was surprised we drafted him, especially, you know, you look at Jacksonville. I mean, Brian Thomas Jr. is a monster. Oh, my gosh. Do I wish we had that guy. Um, but that being said, I, I mean, yeah, I, I think if we can get a good seven, eight, nine years 
out of Fatano, you'd think we would have kind of learned our lesson a little bit with the Castro's career getting shortened. You know, we, we took a chance on Jarvis Jones that didn't work out a, a decade ago with Kevin Colbert. So, I mean, we've occasionally reached for this. You know, Darnell Washington, do I think he's going to play 10 years in a league? No. But if we can get a great five, six years out of him, and great by the standards of the – I mean, my gosh, he's the best blocking tight end in the NFL already as far as I'm concerned. So – and to be I, fair, I, I'm for this for the most part. I, I don't think Kevin Colbert took enough swings. Right. And I'm a Kevin Colbert guy. I don't think – but they're starting to stack these injury guys. It's Peyton Wilson. It's Corey Trice. It's Troy Fotano now. It's Darnell Washington. <clears throat> You're increasing your odds of bad things happening when you keep adding these guys. I'm just I'm, – it's a concern that I have with this team going forward. Well, I think Trice in the seventh is exactly yeah, that's, where you, that's an old brainer. Yeah, you take a guy like that. I mean, Peyton Wilson in the third. I mean, let's be honest, he's a first round talent. He was. He, he and is. and, a and if he, they fall, you know. Yeah. If he if he stays healthy and the Steelers do get I mean, it's a lottery ticket with these some of these guys. And these guys who are first round talents who are available in the third, you know, if you draft three of them and one of them has a great six, eight year career, yeah. okay, you know. Yeah. Let's face it, you know, <clears throat> Colbert, who I don't have any love for, was sitting on one out of seven, basically, since 2015. And yeah. and, and that's kind of the reason why I think we've gone down in the <clears throat> doldrums. And I think Omar's last two draft classes potentially are, you know, three, four out of seven. And that's what you need to get back on top. Because even the great draft classes in the 70s, you know, there was a lot more rounds back then. Yeah, we might have drafted five Hall of Famers, but boy, we six or seven of those guys didn't make the team. My thing yeah. is, is that four through seventh round picks, a lot of them are a lottery anyways. The the most, it, it's more the exception, not the rule, with you hitting on that many guys in those rounds. Yeah. So when you have guys that fall to four through seven, you're taking a chance anyways, taking these guys. So it doesn't really matter if it's four through seven. Take one. You never know. You might be fine. You you hit the lottery pick. Mm -hmm. That's why four through seven. I don't mind. But when they took a chance on Fotanu in the first, eh, that's the that's the one I'm not comfortable with. Well, it's yeah, tough because the, the way I look at it is with with, with Fotanu, you have the, you have the worries with that injury. The ain't guys guys like Zach Frazier though. Yes. Zach Frazier right now is looking like not just a a, a draft hit. He's looking like he could be a center for the next 10 years. I could not so, agree more. <laughs> so, so, so the hit and miss is there. If we have to get a Fowatanu every, every once in a while to find a Frazier, and, and the chance that that Fowatanu could turn into someone just as good as Frazier if he's not injured, I mean, because let, let's be honest, Fowatanu doesn't tweak that knee right now. Then the, the So it, it's a lottery ticket that I'm willing to take a, a, a risk on as long as we keep bringing guys like Frazier in. Well, to Dave's point, though, Frazier's another guy. He's coming off a broken leg, and, you know, it seems like it was an isolated and it healed well, and he's playing awesome, and I'm so glad we got him. But that's another guy we took a chance on. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's true. And I had forgotten about the broken leg thing with, with Zach Frazier. Um, I'm torn. I really am because I do like the risk it, you know, no risk it, no biscuit type thing, and you yeah. want to take chances. Just I don't, I don't want to see him stack too many of these and then end up – you know, as we can see, Corey Trice is injured again. That's the second time he's been injured in two years. So groin, no not knee. What? Yeah, but he he had other injuries besides the knee in college too. The knee was the worst one, but mm -hmm. he's and with the with the offensive line. I'm, I'm wondering, and not calling it a reach by by any means. So I don't want anyone to think I'm saying reach. There might have been a little bit of a reason for them to ramp up the search for offensive line. Like we need guys right now. Be a miss, but this is a particular thing during this shortened rebuild we're trying to do. It has to hit now, and so that that may have been a big reason. If they because they're not going to take Fuatano with his knee hang hanging halfway off, they must have felt at least mildly comfortable that this was someone that was not going to get hurt and they knew it was going to be a risk either way, but the, the need to have those trenches bulked up could have been the reason they wanted someone like father other, except for the guys that are around him. I will say that's sure it. Was... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was I'm... just going to, 
Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was teams 15 through 20 that were kicking themselves, you know, at passing on Fuertano because, you know, the risk reward thing and, and this, it finally got to the Steelers and then we were like, we, at 20, we can't pass. And, and I get that. I mean, <clears throat> would I have, I was screaming for a wide receiver that day. Would I prefer to wide receiver? Probably. But from everybody, and I'm no offensive line expert, you know, studying these guys in college, but everyone I respect love this Fuatano pick as far as talent goes. So yeah, true. I'm not going to kill Omar Khan for taking this pick. I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm concerned. I, I will say this. I th- I think he was the best run blocking tackle tackle in the draft. I maybe you could make an argument for, uh, I, I can hardly say his name. Yeah. The, the Penn State Arnie. kid. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Fuaga is a good one, but I, I honestly thought, yeah, Fatano was better. I think it's Fai Fasado Lashanu or whatever the Penn Oshana, State. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I yeah, thought he, was... he. You get an A for effort. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's he's a good player. I mean, I'll be honest with you though, with our need at wide receiver. I mean, I, I this kid Thomas, yeah, I Ryan cannot Thomas stress. Is... He's going to be special. He's already beyond as far as a weapon for the for the Jaguars and he's not Malik neighbors but he's not very far off it and him and Pickens would be ridiculous yeah. Yeah. for fields yeah I don't want to talk too much about him because it's gonna depress me <laughs> <laughs> but Phil Tano is it the same knee I believe it is yeah I yeah. believe this is the, the trouble in the yeah. man all right well, well re- re- really quick because we didn't we, we like I said we waited at 20 for Fortano but I, really quick shout out to the guy that we traded up for to get last week. I, I, I last year. It's impressive that we are not talking about Broderick Jones except for positive things this week after what last week was like. So yeah, you got to give a, little, a guy like that. So. He came out a little shaky, but he settled down and he played a pretty decent game. Like to your point, Zach, after what that disaster last week for him to come back and, and play well is good on him. He, he said that he, he, he came right in and he went right to the tape. And he, he said it was awful, like he expected it to be. But for a guy like that to come in, and uh, and I can I get to I'll say it on your show. We can't say it on mine. He he straight up said, you know, when you fuck up, you fuck up. Yeah. So and, and he owned it. And if he would have owned it and then come out and played shaky the whole game, that would be one thing. But I I was impressed, and he wasn't going up against you know the, you know second third string guys. He was did going he, up against. Did he take the brace off this game? Was that the That's other big question. thing I didn't too? Notice. Some I I thought I saw some somewhere where he took the brace off this game. Well, if he's gonna play like that, I, 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 that I don't know. Oh I mean, yeah, if he, if he plays like this, throw that fucking thing in the trash. Yeah, throw that thing in the trash and never bring it back. Yeah. yeah. The only I mean to be honest with you, the only guys I'm looking at from that draft class right around the time we took Fatanu, um, you know, the cornerbacks Quinion Mitchell, Nate Wiggins, uh-huh. who both look yeah. like they're good, they're nice players. Yeah. I mean I. Them and Thomas are the only ones that could really make an argument. As far as another lineman goes, no, I, I, I think based on where the tackles were at that point, the Steelers made the best possible choice. I don't yeah, that's what the big it. thing was, was the corners. That's what I remember. It yeah. was the top corner in the draft was there. Yeah, I liked Brian Thomas, and I liked Xavier Worthy, too. Um, I know he hasn't lit the world on fire, but I watched a little bit of that game last night. He just he looks dangerous when he gets the ball in his hand. Oh, looks, speed, man. Speed. Man, is. That, uh, that opening night. Like little yeah. jet sweep reverse yeah. thing where yeah. he just took off. I was like, oh my God, how did Kansas yeah. City get this guy? Exactly. Exactly. Hey, what'd you guys think of Mason McCormick coming out good. of the jumbo he, packages? He did yeah. good. Yeah. Did they good. said he was a little wild. He was hitting his own guys. He was hitting anything he could <laughs> see, but that, I don't like that. That's that's good with me, man. Just keep hitting people, buddy. Yeah. Did, I thought he was... he, did he replace Spencer Anderson because Anderson was struggling, or was there something I missed there? Uh, no, he no, didn't no, no, play no, guard. He was. Yeah, he didn't play guard. He he was the jumbo. T- oh, and, oh the, okay. He was the, he was like a, a third tight end when he came in because if you notice, he at first I'm looking and I'm like, oh my gosh, is Spencer Anderson hurt? Did they bench Daniels? What's going on? Because I saw him on the field, but after every play, he was he was doing the hey, I'm a, I'm eligible, I'm eligible, and I loved it. I mean, it seemed like every play he was in, you could see him like he- Henley and. Just he was getting into it with somebody after the play, like rubbing rubbing off of him, like, hey, 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 you're lucky to play's over, otherwise I'd put you in the ground right now. 
<laughs> not that you gave McCormick a shout out after the game. Like not you specifically pointed yeah, McCormick Najee out did, yeah. in the run game and said how yeah. much. So, and I like an excited Najee. And yeah. that that and, uh, and by the way, me about what do you think? Do you think he meant to he meant to not score at the end? Everyone was like, "Oh, look at Najee be, being patient and not scoring." He wanted to score on that run. I don't know whatever. So I should have. I mean, I, I don't know if you. I saw what other game was it? The Giants? No, I forget what other game it was. But it was the Giants up, game. That was a was smart a play game? by yeah by Singletary. Singletary. Yeah, I but if that. you go up to, if you go up two scores and the other team's got no timeouts with thirty seconds left, I mean it's essentially the same thing. I mean I get it. You give them at least a chance rather than just kneeling the game out. But there, there comes a point where. Well, I know let's, in the Browns let's go twenty-eight game, points, was, Pittsburgh. <laughs> I know that. I know. I know in the Browns game that was right at the two-minute warning. Was it that? Yeah, okay. yeah. So he yeah. went down at the one. So and the Giants were doing everything they could to give the game away. I mean, my gosh, it was three and out after three and out, and then the kid missed a forty-eight yard field goal. Yeah. So I, I don't blame him for saying, "Okay, l- let's get out of here." Let's, I was let's... mad that Najee didn't do it because he came close to my projection of twenty-eight points. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, bro. I almost nailed it. Get your ass in the fucking end zone, but whatever. Yeah, you would have. You well, I, I, I said nineteen ten. It was twenty ten. I just thought Boz would kick. Yeah, you were right there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how long before Russell Wilson demands a trade? I mean, at this point, he's got to be bitterly disappointed. This was this was handed to him. They told him he was the starter from from the jump from day one. You're the starter. Justin's the backup. Now go hit and the now, sled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now go hit the sled. Yeah, <laughs> which is a whole other topic that Dave, Dave, and I spent like fifteen. It's, why are you having your quarterback? They literally looked at sled. him and said, "Get your ass outside, hit the sled, kid. Let's go." Well, I know, I I know. Leanne on our show said that um, I forget the guy. Uh, he he does the Believe podcast for the Denver Broncos. Yeah. They suggested this calf thing has been lingered the whole time he was in Denver. Oh, so really? it might not have been the slow. Wow. It may yeah. have aggravated it, but the yeah. calf may have been pre existing. And and who was who what, what other Steeler guy actually specific I think there's only one guy specifically said that the sled thing is a myth. That he didn't oh, actually really? I, I was it Oh that M- wait, it was Fittipaldo or, or back. Yeah, it, 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 it was one of the writers. I think it was said that the Yeah. The whole that the whole sled thing is a myth. That it had nothing to do with the sled. He was not pushing. But he's the only guy to say it. So there's a lot of weird he, vagueness. Does he work directly for the Steelers? I'm, I'm yeah. 99% I, I, I sure it was know. Fittipaldo who said it. But uh, D- Dave, to your to, to your point, I, I remember you, you, we were talking um, on Twitter about this. And the only question that I have about Russell Wilson in the trade is what kind of trade are we looking at here? Are we talking about trading a classic car away or are we talking about trying to get rid of a lemon? So it depends on what other teams see here. You want to make them believe it's a classic car, right? <laughs> Even though it could I, well, I, well be a lemon. I, I don't know if we can pull off the classic car thing anymore. Dude, have you seen him in workouts? I mean, he's trying to be a good soldier, but he can't even like do a lot of the running drills correctly. And he well, wants to be out there. I, mm. in, in fairness to Wilson, it's not like he lost the job on the field, which would I think would make him impossible to trade. Yeah, true. But, <clears throat> True. This whole I'm injured, I could be, I may be. You know, let's face it. He he's he got Wally Pipped. It's not that yeah. Wally Pip was a was a good first baseman that Lou Gehrig replaced, and he went on to have a pretty decent career somewhere else. You know, Wilson's older. I mean, he opened the door for Justin Fields. He didn't do he didn't get hurt on purpose. And you know, I we we talked about it. I I said. I don't feel like Fields getting the chance in the first game he was ever going to give the job back. Yeah. And I still I still don't feel that way. I think come the trade deadline, there's got to be some value there. I mean, the, the Dolphins must already be ready to make a deal because after watching Skylar Thompson play yesterday and he gets hurt, now they're on the third. This, their season's on the brink already. Um, so it's going to be an interesting uh, dilemma for the Steelers that, you know, Fields is one injury away from Wilson starting and, you know, he, he's a running quarterback and is that risk. Do they take that chance and recoup some draft picks or do they just hold on to Russ all season and just. Depends on the offense. Does anybody know. Yeah. Um, does Russell Wilson have, I don't know his contract details. He have any power in this or the Steelers he, pretty much get to dictate. No, I don't think so. I think he's got to 
veteran minimum, no, no okay, trade, see, no anything. And that case, could, he, Steelers I think it's six. He, they could, they could, he, he, yeah, he's probably going to ask them to cut him. Because I, I mean, if he does, I mean, then again, if he's smart, he'll just, if Fields keeps winning and be the insurance policy, let's face it. So I get, I if he got traded to Miami, that's a pretty good situation. But honestly, I think Huntley, who was on the practice squad this week, will be on the roster next week. I think he's probably the starter next week. And I've always liked Huntley, uh, the old Baltimore guy. Mm-hmm. I think I think he might be pretty good in, in that system. So, you know, if he fails, then yes, they don't have any choice but to turn to a guy like Wilson. But you got Sam Darnold leading the league in touchdown passes. Andy Dalton comes off the bench and, and has the game of his – well, it wasn't even the best game of his career, but it was a great game. All of a sudden, Carolina looks good. Tell me about it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Joe Flacco, I, I, I mean – Last year, I mean, there's yeah. guys sitting out there who, if you really want to just go get a reclamation project, you know, who who knows? And then again, Starkey made an excellent point today. He said, why trade him? He's You're paying him $1.2 million. Yeah. He's probably going to leave at the end of the year. Just let him be insurance on the bench. I mean, unless you get a crazy offer. That's what it's going to be. He, he demands a trade and starts putting up a stink, and we talked about his media machine if they start yeah. rolling against the Steelers, then they might want to just get rid of the headache. <clears throat> or if somebody comes in and just blows them away, which doesn't seem very likely, because like you said, there's other backup quarterbacks out there that they can trade for. Russell Wilson is not. If they not. if they can get something to make up for what they're going to give up for Justin Fields, because that's going to generate from a sixth to a fourth now that he's yeah. probably going to play 51% of the season. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, so if they could, if someone would offer him a fourth through a sixth round pick for him, I'm probably taking it. Yeah, it'd have to be around the fourth, fourth for me to, to give up on him. I said Just fifth originally because it's in the middle. It's between yeah. a fourth and a sixth because that's what you're hovering around giving up for Justin, anyways. So, yeah, I, it's tough, man. To me, it's it's like I told you, everybody's got a price. I mean, yeah. I was kind of, honestly, I was kind of hoping that Andy Dalton would bomb yesterday. Yeah, and I mean, then that would be another team. Maybe Carolina. Hey, we'll give you Wilson for Thielen. I mean, I know he's older, but you know, Thielen's hurting now too. Oh, yeah, yeah you, did, you did limp off yesterday. Yeah. And by the way, side note, uh, Deontay Johnson had 100 yards receiving yesterday and a touchdown, at least one, right? 121, best game of his career. Yeah. Crazy. It, the, the talent's there. His career was wasted in Pittsburgh with Ben's you know, decline and then the last two years with Kenny Pickett. Oh, no, no, it, no. It, Kenny's much better than Fields. Just ask them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. he might be a pain in the ass and a punk, but. He's yeah. got talent. He's got a I, lot I, of talent. I, I hope he puts up 1,500 yards on the 3-14 and 14 Panthers and he can celebrate him, himself all over the place of how great. I, that's the, I, I just always thought he was a me guy. I, 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 Talent-wise, yes, we should have paid him. It, 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 I understood he was definitely our number one receiver, but I just something about it in the hold-in, I just – have not seen a guy decline attitude wise so far so fast as I did with Johnson. He it's got to the point where you know, hey, okay, fine, yeah, you may be great. Go go be great somewhere else. And and Dave and I would 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 argue back and forth about this. Both of us, he aggravated the shit out of both of us at times last season. But you, if you put yourself in his shoes, I mean, he's playing for his next contract. He's in the mm-hmm. prime of his career. And he's got Kenny freaking Pickett and Matt Canada that he's dependent on for his livelihood, for yep. his next contract. That's got to drive you absolutely it's insane. Like, and some people handle it better than others, and he didn't handle it well. But they and, those two cost him millions, millions and millions of dollars. Well, let me ask you this, though, Dave. If he had handled it like a professional, knowing Matt Canada is definitely on the way out of town, he'd be in the Arthur Smith offense right now. Yeah, yeah he'd be much better off. And the- the problem is, is that Arthur Smith went and looked at tape and saw his effort on blocking, and was yeah. probably like, "Yeah, you got to go." Yeah, and exactly. Not, not, not it's a distinct only. possibility as well. I, I'm telling you, the effort on his blocking was pathetic. And uh, and uh, Arthur Smith offense, you got to block, man. You got to be a willing blocker. And he would literally walk off the field during the play. There was a fumble on the ground. He didn't even yeah. go after it. That's the type of stuff that killed him. That kind <laughs> of stuff. I, I, Arthur Smith probably about lost his mind. and said, "Get this dude the fuck out of here." 
That's that's a great point da and damning praise right here. Arthur Smith thought, thought so much of Deontay Johnson's blocking that he's perfectly willing to let Scotty Miller be on the field in jumbo packages instead. Actually, and uh, for, for for the record, there's been a lot of praise over the last day uh, day since since the game about Calvin Austin, Scotty Miller, about their blocking, about their willingness to play bigger than they are. So yeah. for, I understand what we're saying, but directly out of at least after three weeks they're very confident at least that specific part of the game and i i was looking i didn't see any of those particular hey look the little guys out there moments impact the blocking i, I didn't see it come back to bite us I, I i could be missing something in that particular area but on paper what looks like could have hurt us isn't hurting us at least, at least from well, what i'm seeing. at least no one started walking off the field as soon as they hiked the ball <laughs> Yes, or run that's, or running backwards. That's plus. because that I I have never seen a receiver <laughs> so consistently. <laughs> and, and, and it's not just the running backwards. And I'll say this straight up: I've since he got in, he wanted to be Antonio Brown so fucking bad. He was willing to run backwards whether it meant it, it was needed or not. Just always because Antonio Brown could run backwards and make up for it, and and Deontay Johnson wanted to do that and couldn't come close to replicating it and always hurt us with it. So that you mix that with the blocking, yeah, and talent can go somewhere. If yeah, he ever gets I'll, well, I'll, I'll leave it at this. If he ever gets on a team with an above average quarterback, I think you're going to see one hell of a wide receiver. And you're going to be like Phew. maybe we should have held on to him a little bit longer. Blocking be damned. I, I mean, I get it and I get you guys and Arthur Smith likes his wide receivers to block, and it sounds great. I want my wide receivers to make big plays. No, I mean, that's look, what I want. I I, you, can, I you, can call, you can call what I'm saying conspiracy theory if you want. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I believe you. I believe looked, you that was that was like, part of it. Hey guys, I, I, I agree. You have this that effort but, at that level of effort just not going to work. I think. Um, I, I mean, I, if you think about, it, I think there were hints of that Ben's last year. And with Ben with Deontay, and let's face it, Ben made Deontay a lot of money uh, in yeah. 20 and 21. And I, but, you know, those little comments of there's too many me guys in the locker room, and I don't like mm -hmm. what's going on in there. We all yeah. thought it was Claypool. And I'm. It, yeah, well, it was Claypool, too. <laughs> yeah, it, it was him, too. But I, I'm wondering of how much of that was Deontay Johnson and some of these okay. other guys who aren't Wait, here wasn't, anymore. Wait, wasn't Juju there, too? Like, it was all the – it was oh, that yeah, whole crew. That was, yeah. a, that was the clubhouse and a half. But Ooh. So, speaking Juju of – Juju got a receiver, touchdown last night, though. Did he? Yeah, yeah, he scored a touchdown for Kansas City. Oh, he that's did. right, Juju. Did. Yep, you're right. Yep. Uh, speaking of the wide receiver, I think they went into this game with four, which – you know, at this point, I think Mike Tomlin's just trying to just doing it to tweak me personally at this point. I swear he's doing it to, because I can't. I, I, Dave was all excited about Roman Wilson. We all were yeah, full participant in practice for, on Friday. He's going to go. And I get the explanation. They are facing a very good run team. You wanted the extra de defensive lineman. I get it. Hey, Mike, do you really need four tight ends? How about sitting one of them who don't, you know, make any impact in the game you know i just he tried to make a run of five tight ends but uh, the one yeah got hurt. if mccall hardman could have had a had a pulse he would have played too i mean <laughs> mccall pruitt i'm sorry if he had a yeah. pulse he would have played too it, it's just they're downplaying the position of wide receiver is driving me crazy and i get it calvin austin had a big play and he's capable of that but he had one of those last year and we didn't see him the rest of the season well, I, the one thing Let's I'll say about... Let's see if you can stack these up and, and continue to play like that. The one thing I'll say about that is that last year, the picket play, it was over the top. He ran past people, caught the ball, and went on to the end zone. I really like this. You know, they did a good job showing it on television and Romo describing that Fields sucked the safety down and then he kind of hit him in stride. And I, I think for the first time we really saw... Hey, look, if you utilize him exactly the right way, he can be dangerous because he turned on the afterburners and just ran right through and passed the and those guys were converging and he just boom was gone. Yeah. They just get him speed. in space. You gotta yeah. get him in space. And that was and I don't want to pile on. I, yeah. I thought in he stride. tried. Yes. Yeah. Not just I don't hey, pile let's on do the... jet sweeps and hope for the yeah. best. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
I didn't want to say that I don't want to pile on because everyone knows I'm not a Calvin Austin fan. That was a lot of Justin Fields. Yeah. The way he, you know, like you oh, said, manipulated the safety, put that ball on the numbers in stride. Oh, yeah. And you hit a player like that. I don't care who you are. The, he can, he's going to outrun everybody. He's got four, two speed. That's what yeah. he should do. But again, Je- uh, Van Jefferson, nothing. Scotty Miller had a pretty good well, couple again, of I plays. I didn't even he notice had, Van had Jefferson one eyeball, on the field. So that- yeah. Yeah, he did get poked in the eye at one point. I just, I want to see a trade for a wide receiver so badly. Yeah. Oh, real, I think real it's quick, one missing Real thing. quick, though, Roman Wilson, what's you guys' thought on him getting the, the healthy and active? You think it's like not, not like not knowing the playbook good enough yet? Or, or what do you think it was? I, I think it was the, the I, I don't think health had much to do with it. I think it was, we, we, we're not sure if we're going to get a hundred percent Roman Wilson. Maybe he was ready at 80% to go. And that's why he was a full participant. And they were like, this is the game where if we put an 80% Roman Wilson out there, we're going to get a 30% back. <clears throat> and I point. would rather have a hundred percent Roman Wilson next week for a game. That's not going to be nowhere near as physical as this one. Plus it doesn't necessarily go with my game plan to have that extra wide receiver. I need extra big guys. So I don't think this was a knock on Roman Wilson. I think this was us having an offensive coordinator that knows how to game plan based on teams he's playing and situations. And this was what the chargers should have done with Justin Herbert is said, this is not the early game to be a gladiator. This is a big picture. We're a better team and we want a deep run. Let's protect Herbert because I was was on my podcast. I was on our podcast earlier. I was disappointed in the way Justin Herbert was allowed to play this game. Harbaugh should have simply sat and said, Justin, I appreciate you want to do this, but we have a long season. You are too important to this. Even if we lose this game, you don't play. It takes some of the shine off the loss. It takes some of the impact off what this game means. It's no longer as much as a litmus test, and we can live to play another day. Instead, Justin Herbert practically crawled off that field. Did you see the second he got to the sideline? He just sat. He couldn't yeah. even stand on the sideline. So that, to me, not not close to work the risk and not the kind of coaching I thought we'd get from Harbaugh. So I think we outcoached them without having to have a sing- uh, having to put Roman Olsen on the field. So I, I was impressed by that. Another quick point about the wide receivers. I think we need to up our expectations right now because um, we're growing faster than we thought we would as a football team. And we needed to answer the question, could we win with the right receiver core? We've answered it. We could win with the right receiver core. Now we need to contend, and we cannot contend with this wide receiver core. So my question is, with Justin Fields playing the way he does and assuming he does, are we a are we now a wide receiver away from being that team? Yes. I really the where's the other hole? The defense is elite. You know, you're not going to trade for another tackle. You, you tackles are who they are, and they're pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Uh, that's the one weakness. You see Justin Fields drop back more than one occasion, and everyone's covered. And he has no place to go with the ball. And, and you see it a lot. They need that wide receiver too. They get the wide receiver too. With this, I was talking to you guys before the show. I think the AFC is wide open. I really do. I don't think Kansas City is that impressive. Uh, we'll see about Buffalo. They're going to play tonight. Um, Cincinnati hasn't looked good. No, nobody in AFC North has looked very good. Kansas City Steelers. losing Pacheco has kind of made them yeah. like one dimension. Yeah. No offense well, to Steele and and you know those other guys, but like I, I just <clears throat> they're not Pacheco. So I, look out though for Kareem Hunt because he's back. He was on the practice squad. They couldn't get yeah. him ready. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that, you're not wrong. I just yeah, they, uh, they he didn't have a good a, season last year. Um, coming back, so is he starting to drop off? Is my thing with him. But if he's good to go and healthy, man, you could be right because he did really well in that system before. And the Kansas City thinks they'll get Edward Solaire back in two weeks. Uh, I'm oh, really impressed with that. That's, that's, that's a good call. That's a good call because he um, he can be a, a weapon for them if they utilize him right. Yeah, and Kelsey doesn't look like uh, Kelsey's best years might be behind him. I mean, he's what thirty six. Uh, I think there's a good I, chance I, he's washed. Yeah. He stayed. He stayed yeah, one year too a, long. He's such a big part of their offense. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna hold off on that. I think this is the. It is an age thing, but I think it's and this might be just being superficial. I think dude partied too hard in the off season, and yeah. this is him not realizing what it was gonna take him to reacclimate to football. I think because of are we're still going to get 
classic Kelsey down the stretch, but this is an old guy that should not have been out as late as he was as consistently as he was. Yeah. The problem with KC though, is if, if you pay attention to them, they, they fix their wide receiver position. Rice is the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. Worthy is Worthy, awesome. Yeah, yep. early, yeah. Yeah. I, and that's, Juju's mm-hmm. kind of their third guy. And that's why they're still winning. They can lean in that passing game. You got Mahomes, for God's sakes. And they got Mahomes. Um, that's the difference. But, but if you face a tough enough defense, yeah, I that can, can give you that. trouble. Yep. So, yeah. So uh, if we, I, I guess the, the way I put it right now is I, I, I if you say we're a wide receiver away, that means Super Bowl. But also, if we're a wide receiver away, if we get that wide receiver, like the wide receiver you have in your head, whoever it is, if we get that wide receiver, can we suddenly beat the Chiefs? Can we suddenly beat the Bills in Buffalo? Can we suddenly beat whatever NFC team we're going to have to go up against? Because to me, that's what it means. And I think, honestly, that might be true. Like, I genuinely, think... if we get a real wide receiver in to go with Pickens. Uh... I'm I'm not worried about Buffalo. I mean, I think we can beat them th- the way we're constituted. I mean, it's hard to mm. say with KC. I mean, you could get another wide receiver and still not beat Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Mahomes is a if he's on that day, you know, it's it's a, well, it's, it's a wrap. I, no, our defense is not going to be able to. You, you, even with our defense, you just contain Mahomes. The be- yeah. great defenses contain Mahomes, yeah. and that, that's the thing. Containing Mahomes might mean 24 what, points. What so great defense has ever contained Mahomes Yeah, in, well, in, a, in a money game? Well, contain, like, contain, how many, like I said. How many points are we Mahomes talking here? What do you, what do you consider? Well, 20, you can say the Tampa, Bay, the Tampa Bay defense in the Super Bowl did, but they had a couple of yeah, uh, beat-up tackles. 24 points or less is containing Mahomes to me. 24 Falcons points or less. did that last night. Yeah. Yeah. But yes. So, so, I, I, which, which is why the, the Falcons are making us look really good. Right. That's <laughs> why I feel good about us. Watching the Falcons beat Philly in Philly, right? And then almost beating Kansas City, if not for the refs not calling a blatant PI call. But, oh, anyways, that was crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, that's what makes me think that, yeah, we've, we've got some here. I mean, our passing defense is sixth in the league, our rushing is third in the league, and, and total yards is first. Total scoring defense is first. They're averaging 11 points a game, giving up. Three I games. mean, that's it's insane. Well, eight po- it's insane. We're, we're 8.7. We're, we're allowing 8.7 points a game. Yep. Is it that? Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. 8.7. Oh, 26 in three games. Isn't, yeah. isn't that yeah. delightful? Jeez. No, and yeah. we allowed in the in three games last season in the opening, we allowed 70 points in the first three games last season. Yeah. 20s, and, and we won two of those. If we yeah, keep but, this up, I can't but wait. But half of Christmas. those were the 49ers in the first <laughs> game. <laughs> Yeah, the 49ers. So, yeah, I, to answer your question, yeah, I think they're a wide receiver away from really being in the AFC Championship. I mean, I, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself and getting too excited, but think about Tyreek Hill on the other side with George Pickens. Think about what that would do for the team. Uh, yeah, I mean, th- Tyreek Hill with anybody on the other side of him is... Yeah. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> uh, yeah. but, but matching him up with Pickens... And who knows if he'd be available at the trade deadline because they're going to be out of I don't know. I, mean, um, I want a million dollars. That doesn't mean I'm going to get it. Well, I, I know Poppy Annie and Stark. I like you shooting for the stars, though. Yeah. Poppy I mean, he's Annie a 30-something-year-old be... wide receiver, and they're going to be out of it. Uh, would they deal him for the right price? I think they would. How about Russ? Straight up for him. No, no, no. You, <laughs> now you're really uh, asking yeah, for I, a lottery ticket. I, I know. I'm fucking with you. But, yeah. Well, just... Poppy Annie and Starkey talked about a trade – of do you trade Highsmith straight up for Devontae Adams because the no. Raiders would probably no, do no, it? No, no. Don't mess with the defense right now. I would don't do it for Ty- Tyree Kill. Oh, I don't know about Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams I, no, is no. younger. He's younger, but he's not. He's not that guy. He's he's very good, and I would love to have Devontae Adams. You, uh, no, but, but, I bet you Aaron Rodgers would love to have him. Yeah, but he's not Tyree Kill. If you, if you if you think about it, the 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 Patriots got Randy Moss because he was disinterested with being on the Raiders and they really only got one Super Bowl year out of him and they lost that one. I would you, would, would you, would you want Devontae Adams if you knew you only get one good year out of him, but it will be record setting. Well, it's, it's not that they'll only get one good year. I mean, he is a little bit older. He's only 31. He's not as old as Hill, but I mean, this is a guy who it was arguably, you know, especially the last two years with the Packers and the first year with the Raiders, the best wide receiver in football, Tyreek right. Hill included. I mean, this is right. a guy who puts up fifteen hundred yards yeah. when yeah. he's got a got a quarterback. Right. No, you're not wrong. 
<clears throat> so Did he have that good a season with the Raiders? I didn't recall. His first season was was yep, hundred catches, fifteen hundred yards. His first yeah. season with uh, when he with Carr. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, Jimmy G comes there, throws his back out, banging porn stars. <laughs> and, you know, can even can't any throw yeah. to nobody now. And so, even any still gets 1150. Yeah. So, I mean, and I'm I, not hating it. I, I, and I would try, and I trust this team right now to be able to bring someone like that in because the, the my worry in the offseason was if you bring another talent or personality like that, it would rock the boat. I think right now, the way this team is gelling together, even as George Pickens is the ego that that is, he'd welcome that knowing, you know what? We just got another step closer to the Super Bowl. I'm going to, you know, this is going to be fun. You know, it, well, there's been, you know, that we can each have a thousand yards. There's more than enough ball to go around. We feel like the kind of team that can actually manage those kind of personalities right now. We're, we're, we seem to be doing it pretty well. George Pickens, it seems happy. He does. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it, he's the unquestioned number one in the offense. So, I mean, I'd be shocked if he wasn't happy. I mean, he, bottom line is, but, if you're going, he's going to get the targets. Period. Yeah, but you bring in a you, you bring in a true what, number one. What was his one. stat line last week? He, seven targets, what, five catches, fifty-seven yards. Yeah, yeah. That 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 that's not a lot. I mean, and George, for George Pickens to be excited but about also that, drew to a me, key that's, holding that's penalty. Close. I thought he had like yeah, so I thought he only had like twenty nine for some reason. I thought that most of his damage was done with penalties. I could have sworn that, last. That, that was that was, was a, Denver. Denver. Yeah. That's what yeah. I meant. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the Denver yeah. game. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So so he's not he's not having like 150 like 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 actually games. That, so I I'm impressed with that. It, this is the first game where we had our two leading uh guys in receiving were receivers. Yeah. Yep. I just, it just it just clicked. I just remembered. I saw that and I went, "Hey, finally, it, it wasn't a tight end and a receiver. It was actually if, two wide receivers." If our twelve million dollar a year tight end could have held on to the ball, uh, yeah, right no, the you half, tell me about it. And, and they had wiped his, too. yeah, and they wiped off the twenty yard gain he had. Yeah. It, it, oh, then, dude, yeah, I was pissed about that. The drop, yeah. I was, I was really pissed so, about that. So we, we, yeah, we could have won a much, much bigger. We're, we're close. Yeah. We're close to being a much, much. The ceiling is so much higher for this team than I thought it was going to be. When Arthur Smith said the dam's about to break and this, this, the players were repeating him, this was the first time where an offensive coordinator for Steelers said something, and I didn't go, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I actually I actually felt like yes. he was correct in saying that. Like, I thought that, too, that they're very close. So, I think and the problem, I, too, to is of- when, if you want to go get a wide receiver, there's just – I mean, like Devontae Adams, I mean, it, yeah, you could maybe flip a guy like Highsmith for him. But he's a forty million dollar cap hit for two seasons. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's... There's there's not a lot of guys out there they can just go get. I wouldn't mind Jacoby Myers oh, yeah. if you're talking Raiders receivers too. I mean, it cost you a lot less, and and he's pretty decent. I mean, I'll take anything at this point, guys. A- anything. Good point. Get Van Jefferson out of here. Give me somebody that can actually produce. Yeah, yeah. Because we'll 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 win. The, uh, I I can see us winning the next two three weeks with what we got. But when that when that trade line deadline starts to approach and other teams start to panic about whether they need like we were talking about an outside linebacker or if, if they need a quarterback or all that, that's when we start looking at oh wide receivers that team has. Yep. Yep. I'm looking um, at the looking ahead, at the practice squad. We don't. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. Is they, I mean you you're looking at practice squad type guys. I. You know, you you could maybe bring it. You just need a bigger wide receiver at this point. I, I, got, I speculated chosen Anderson because he just got cut, um, and then it was uh, Jalen Rager. I think it was the other one, and he just got signed by the Chargers. I think. Yeah. Did um. He? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, chosen Anderson is a guy that at one point was a productive yeah, wide watched. receiver. I don't know what happened. He changed his name to chosen, <laughs> and now he's not the chosen at all. <laughs> Like I, I, yeah, I don't know. I know he's hurt, but I mean, I think a guy like Skaronic could really help us. You know, he it looked like I, I think he, he's a guy we could get involved with the offense. He played a big part in the Super Bowl, so I mean, of the guys who are out there and we could get, I mean, yeah, a guy opposite Pickens, maybe you have those small shifty guys. You know, when we go to the three and four empty sets. Which they don't do very often anyway. I mean, I might be asking for something that the 
they might not really use. I mean, uh, it just it just feels like this team is close, and, and you. I, this is all Justin Fields related. He's gotten me so excited about this offense for the first time in so long. Like he's playing so much better than I thought he would be. And I thought he might beat out Russ anyway, but he's been so good, so accurate, you know, so decisive. If he's going to play on, on a high level, then get him another weapon so that this offense can really be dangerous. A okay. uh, question. We go into, we, 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 we play Indy. We, 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 let's play. We put 30 points up 30 plus. And we like really wallop them. Do you walk away feeling like maybe this team doesn't need a wide receiver to be as good as they want to be, or do you still think, regard? Because I'm just wondering with the uh, with the coordinator, we haven't had a coordinator that's known what to do in a while. So I might still be in that weird trauma space of thinking that I need something I don't to be better because I forot how an NFL offense is supposed to run. Yeah, no, they need, another guy. They, they, they they need another guy. they definitely need another guy. Zach, the, the real the real question is what happens when they fall behind in a game mm. and they have to there come from go. behind and they can't oh, run the ball good. and grind and depend on, you know, the team being worn out in the fourth quarter. What happens when they fall behind 10, nothing to Dallas? I mean, there you go. No, as currently point. constituted, they're cooked. With Unless Dallas, the defense starts getting turnovers, you know, at, but if, with Dallas, it's real simple. Just keep running the ball. Cause I mean, what Baltimore yeah, throwed 15 times yesterday. Yeah. But yeah. They Which, could because they got a hat, they got a lead. If you if you fall behind with this kind of offense, that's when the problems occur. And you're gonna fall behind. Well, you, the defense can't, you know, dominate every game like they do it. It's not gonna be seven points a game all season. You're gonna run into these offenses, and Dallas is gonna be the first one. And granted, it's not a perfect offense because you know they're kind of one-dimensional, they don't run the ball. Right. Yeah. But and then you're gonna face the you know the Cincinnati's and the and the Kansas Cities later on. What happens when this team falls behind? Yeah. How do they catch up? How do you know you can't run Najee Harris up the middle three times when you're down ten points? It's it's not going to work. I think you got to hope Jalen is healthy by then because Jalen is, I think, is a big missing piece of the offense right now because they're they virtually have no screen game. They have no the little short outlet passes. I mean, Najee is he's got decent hands. He can catch the ball. He does not have burst in the open field though. No, so. Jalen catches that little screen. He makes the guy miss and takes off for 15 yards. Najee tries to run over the guy and gets one yard. And, yeah, right. that's nice at the second half of the game, but it doesn't help Fields yeah. very much. It's nice when you have a lead or you're close and you can grind when you can't no, do it anymore. I, no, I, I get exactly what you're saying because you're right. Because there's going to be teams they sell out to stop the run. They're going to have to pass. And with these wide receivers, not named George Pickens, I don't know if, if yesterday was a fluke or if maybe we are starting to see some things here. That'd be great if Calvin Austin III is starting to really come into it. That'd be wonderful. Oh, yeah. And mean, get I some consistency it. there. And yet we're, we're, but, we still are waiting for, for Roman Wilson. Who, yeah. who knows what we have in him? Yeah, so we, this, this could all be null and void. We have, we have no clue. So it could, and, and it's exciting either way because either way we get to see a wide receiver we're going to go get or we just get to keep winning. I think we'll see it this week. I mean, it, it, play. If, I think if, he'll play this week. Yeah, if if Najee's hurt, uh, I mean, if it's beyond just a hey, I got bumps and bruises, let me make it good, look good, and put it in a sling so everybody asks. I mean, we'll see when the injury report comes out, just how it's, serious all this is. Didn't Jalen reactivate his injury yeah. too? Yeah, he's hurt too. It it's too bad because the yeah, Colts' Jay run defense is atrocious, and these two they could yeah. dominate this game on the ground. Hey, Cordell Patterson's nothing to sneeze at. That kid. Yeah. He still looks like he's. Oh, got that it. was. Oh yeah. I, I, running the ball, he was. He was. He's been much more effective as a running back than I expected. Because we yeah, haven't. Uh, he hasn't returned a kick yet, has he? No, I don't think he has. No. No. Yeah, I so, think so he ran. Not. I think he ran one back. Did he? I'm not sure, but he yes. didn't really do anything with it. Let me see. Right, he's, we, we, we I saw a, a list the offense, that after like, Patterson is Ward and Champlin will be the next ones up yeah, for the running yeah, backs. That's, that's I tough, like man. Ward. No, I like. Uh, Ward. We, I like. I, Ward. I, I, I like Ward too, but I mean he's not Najee or Jalen, but but you know I, now, I, I now like you're him. now you're really putting George Pickens on an island as the only offensive weapon on the team. Jesus. Ain't nothing he ain't used to, brother. Yeah, it's true. Well, I I also think the more you suck up and make sure that the teams have to commit eight or nine to the box. Look, I don't care if you put a safety over the top of him. You know, let's let's see what happens when you throw it up. 
because Fields has been so accurate to him. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. sooner or later, so- especially with that play action, if you suck that safety in just a little bit, and then you got Pickens one on one. I mean, yeah. I mean, a couple plays taken away, but I'm sorry. You know, one of the best cornerbacks in the league couldn't cover him in certain. Yep. I don't see yeah. anybody on the schedule who I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm worried they're going to shut down Pickens one on one. I think it takes two or three guys. Oh, absolutely. And, and that helps the the lesser talents of the wide receivers that we have. You know, but then again, look, if Fields is going to hit guys like Roman Wilson and Austin and Scotty Miller in stride, yeah, on on these little slants and crosses, that's going to be hard to stop. I mean, that's Brady made that's a- the key with this making it work is how yeah. accurate he's been. Yeah, can, because he, can he maintain this? He's that's been so question. accurate that that's why it's working. I love yeah. that play on the crossover to Miller, where he crossed behind uh, Pickens to get that first down. I mean, he, he there's a dot right there in stride with him, and that was a Beautiful play on it. Was it third and five? I think it was, or something like yep. that. Yep. Dude, those kind of plays, man. If your quarterback can keep putting him right there on the dot, he's right. Bob's yep. right. That's tough mm-hmm. to stop. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the offense. We should spend a little time on this defense because it's been freaking ah. ridiculous. I mean, geez. Oh, my goodness. Cam Hayward is defying father time right now. He is just playing out of his mind. I told Dave this was a big test for him. You know the Falcons' def- uh, offensive line is okay, and the Broncos up, but this this Chargers line is very good. And he at his best game of the season, yeah, just tossing guys out of the room. Like, you absolutely, right. this, this is gonna this is gonna be big praise. And I'm not saying he is this guy, but the way he filled up multiple gaps at the same time was very Casey Hampton like. Just like I'm just gonna be here, yeah, and then I'm going to somehow get to the. He's so much faster than I I, I, I remember him. I, I don't know. I, he, it was a rough 2023, and I think I forgot. Yeah. But he's so, he's I, You're right, defy, defying what I thought he was going to do. I, and I think he's benefiting from Benton and Ogan Joby, who are also there playing you know. great. Oh, yeah. yep. Hayward doesn't have to do everything right now. This Correct. is the ideal situation. I just have yeah. to do my job. And now if I want to suck up two gaps, it's great because I don't have to worry if they run away from me because Ogan Joby and Benton are going to take care of that. That play where he was getting blocked by like two guys and he stuck his hand through and snatched up the running back and still <laughs> brought him it's... down. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. And the sack too, where he grabbed a hold of his Jersey and just yanked him down. Like you ain't going He's... nowhere, bitch. Like you are done. <laughs> I was like, and, and, damn. And I love TJ pointing right away. Going, yeah. hey, give, yeah, give yeah, it yeah. to him. Give it to yeah. him. Yeah. That was great. Uh, I guess I buried the lead too. Uh, Herbig is I, oh again. I, I tweeted all day long. I did. I did not see this coming. I thought it was, you know, just a ho hum draft pick. Whatever. He's going to play inside linebacker, and he'll be a special teams guy. And we'll never hear from him again. And man, he proves me wrong every freaking time he gets on the field. It, it's the one video that. Let me, it gave me so it was different than just Steeler chills. It was what the when the video of him getting drafted when he got so excited, his head was almost between his legs, and you could see him get up and he just screams. I yeah, thought about how happy he was to be in there in Pittsburgh. That moment, I'm like, oh, you're you're gonna be different, and you're and it's not gonna be because of really who you are. It's the will I'm seeing in this person to be that good, and it's he's getting minimal chances. And we're still talking about him like he's just, oh my goodness it's it's remarkable so the he's only, unblockable only, sometimes. That's why I'm a little why I'm he's a little unblockable. about it was it did I see about, this right in eight plays two sacks two tackles for loss two QB hits one forced fumble yeah in it's, eight it's, plays eight plays guys that is incredible and, and bear in mind who he was doing it against yes yeah. Sean well. Slater hey, I mean that, the league yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a Pro Bowl All Pro type talent that he was just beating like a drum. He was yeah, beating right. him like he was rushing against Dan Moore. I, I don't I don't understand. And you, <laughs> and, our, and, and the, the word of the day was attrition, and our defense won the hell out yeah. of that challenge because yep. yeah, I, I think it was Dan Moore who said about their defense that on that last drive we knew they were done. Like about about yeah, their they, defense, I, I you knew that they, they quit. They quit. Yep. And our defense just kept getting better, and Najee kept running harder. 
And it was one of those things where I'm thinking back, I'm like, this, this smells like coward. That, that's when I thought about, about, about the, you know, we get, we get a 10 point lead and we're just going to run the ball for a quarter and a half. So, but I, I, I this defense is going to do every single thing we needed to. Uh, it's it's just the offense is going to dictate how far we can go because the defense mm-hmm. is ready for anything. I mean, Patrick Queen was all over the field up yesterday. Oh it was my goodness! Game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think Chris Hulk lit a fire under him, man. Because because even he he commented on Chris Hulk's comment, so he, he knew oh he did. If I didn't only, know that. Yeah, if only he could have held on to that interception, I think it would have been a perfect game. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That was yeah. a missed sack and miss interception. Same yeah, that play, was a right? crazy play, right? Yep. I was like, Herbig, oh. uh, Herbig almost got him, and then yeah. Queen dropped it. I was uh, like, no! <laughs> yeah. And a big th- a big thing I forget about Patrick Queen is he's smaller than I thought. He plays bigger than he is. When he's yeah. walking back to Hutt, I look at him compared to the other guys. I'm like, he he's actually not like, but he plays this formidable size kind of game. So I yep. was, and I think it, it wasn't that he wasn't having as good games before. I think he was saying with it in this kind of defense, it was almost boring. Like he didn't have to do a lot. Like he was doing like cleanup tackles, but stuff was being done before he got there. He was trying to get into the play, but stuff was just being done. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 I mean, kind of have a defense. Yeah. He said he was, he said he was bored. He got washed <laughs> a little in Atlanta a couple of times. I saw the guards yeah, get did. off and really push him. Uh, I, he, I didn't see any specific times. I mean, uh, a Landon Roberts played great, and yeah. this was uh, this was in a Landon Roberts game. They, they said that, um, but even Peyton Wilson, even though he didn't play very much because they didn't run dime very much, but he had a couple nice plays where he, and he had the big tackle for loss. So mm-hmm. no, they yeah. all they all threw their hat in the bucket and really got after it. Honestly, yeah. I mean, it'll old- be interesting to see. I, I don't think we'll get tested truly on defense until the jets come, it come knocking. Cause I, I just don't, I mean, Dallas is so one dimensional. It's yeah. CD lamb and everybody C-Lamb. else. Yep. Yep. I mean, as long as you, you just bracket him a little bit, although I kind of want to see Joey Porter go up against him one-on-one a little bit. And, and I'm fine I, with that. Honestly, yeah, they, they can't run the ball and they can't stop the run. I, I just, right. I feel bad yeah. for him cause they paid Dak all that money. But I kind of don't feel bad for him because yeah, I really I hate the Cowboys. So yeah, I don't yeah. Bad for him at all. Not at all. Pay him more. Yeah. Thanks. The, yeah. the only small concern <laughs> with this defense is the depth at corner and slot corner. Those yep. two little issues. I mean, with Trice Hart now, uh, Darius Rush didn't even play. He was inactive. Yeah. Um, that scares you a little bit, but but that's nitpicking because this defense is, if they're healthy, they're just incredible. I, I think as long as Trice isn't a major injury, like he's back in a week or two, I think we're okay there. Yeah, I agree. And, and Trice, we were talking earlier about the the drafting guys with with, with uh, injuries. If all we had to do was wait one year of injury for Trice, if we continually get this kind of play, I'm fine with waiting a year on guys if we're going to get this kind of payoff sometimes. And we're five games away from Cam Sutton now. We've survived three. Every game, you just right. mark that calendar. Oh, another week, you survived. Rip- I look. You know, honestly, really forgot, like we're, we're playing so good. I, why, like, bring him in. But right now, do you start him? Like, like play, legitimately, like, I don't. Why don't we want to? But do you like? Im- does he immediately earn a spot just because he exists over Beanie Bishop? Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Well, honestly, I still hate that that was the plan. But I mean, it's it's working so far. I mean, yeah, I, it's. Rip- until Sutton gets back, I mean, I, at this point, Aaron Rodgers, may, I hate, I, I shouldn't say hate, I don't respect Dak Prescott at all. I think he's the most overrated player in sports. I mean, he, I don't think he's very good. So, I mean, till the second half of the season when Sutton comes back, I don't think there's anybody who's going to be able to pick on no. Bishop except for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, that, that game scares me a little bit. Um Dak Prescott's good, but he's one of those guys that just he just can't get over the hump. You see that in all sports. They're pretty good regular season players, and when it comes to playoffs, they're just every they Cowboy know. quarterback since Troy Aikman. Yes, pretty much. It, it, yeah, it's it's very similar to Tony, Tony Romo. It's kind of similar. He was good in regular season. He couldn't get done in the playoffs. He, he just couldn't hold that extra point, could he? Yeah, I mean, Romo. So I mean, good, Bob. 
Yeah, I was going to say Romo was a guy. I mean, I love Parcells line. Let's not put him in the Hall of Fame just yet, you know, no. when he first started. And now here it is 20 years later, and he's, he's knocking on the door of the Hall of Fame. I mean, the fantasy stat influence on the Hall of Fame drives me up the wall. It doesn't mean anything. I play fantasy football. I like fantasy football. But I'm not saying a guy goes into the Hall of Fame because he had good fantasy football stats. No, I agree. I agree. Um, I got to go to work, guys. Duty calls. I'll see y'all. Okay. See you later. Thanks for coming on. Yep. Powering through. It's a um, weird league, but it's, it's it's a balanced league because you think about it, we we you got you got the Bills and the Chiefs are undefeated, um, and we we, uh, we uh, the Bills play tonight. Yes. Yeah, the they're up thirteen tonight. nothing. Yeah. Oh, they'll throw it there. So, so it's look, it's looking good. But yeah, other than that, you have what the Seahawks, the Seahawks, Vikings, yeah, Jags are driving. So it's 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 a interesting league. So if this is the season where the NFL is all about balance, I I like our chances. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I want that wide receiver that we talk, I, I I want it. But in my head, I'm trying to envision the big picture of if that doesn't happen, considering the way Omar Khan. They with all Brandon Ayuk thing because he probably could have thrown the kitchen sink if we really, really said, you know, our offense is desperate and will not work without another wide receiver. So the question is if <coughs> Arthur Smith truly believes that this particular roster can be a Super Bowl contending roster. Uh, I, I, mean, he I, I, might, I, I just, to me, I it, to me, it's not. But yeah, he me, might I, think so. I don't, I don't, receiver. I don't believe it is. I don't believe you can win a playoff game with this with this wide receiver group. I, I just it have to it have to everything would have to fall into line perfectly. I think as long as we're not playing Kansas City, we can win a playoff game with this group. Yeah, I, I don't. Mean, I, I I I mean maybe Miami we couldn't hold in a track meet, but I mean Baltimore. If we're playing Baltimore, I, I yeah. Yeah, I, any I, AFC North team, it's, it'll be a slugfest, and and yeah, any team could win. I, I agree with you there. And Buffalo's got the same problem we do. I mean, they can sit there and say, "Oh, how Josh Allen's better because he's got nine receivers now." But bottom line is, he's got nine receivers because not any of them are yeah. any good. Maybe Coleman by the end of the year, but there's no superstar wide receiver there. But again, he he scares the daylights out of me. If it's a close game and a playoff game. He's gonna beat you. I, uh, you know, I know the Steelers' defense is great, but he's gonna find a way. I mean, he's just too good. He's just yeah. too good. Maybe Fields will be that kind of guy. I, you know, never I, seen as him I was in the saying playoffs. That, I mean, they have similar physical traits. <laughs> you hope that, you know, maybe Justin Fields could be that. That'd be. They're closer in size than you think. I mean, yeah. Fields is a big guy. Yeah, he is. He he is. He you know uh, he lowered his shoulder a, l- a little bit. I think on the first or second run he did. And I almost said, hold up. And then I looked at the size comparison of the guys who was running into. I was like, you're the same size as those guys. I'm good. <laughs> so it, 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 was, it wasn't a, like, you know, to, to I, I wish him all the best and hope he gets better. But it, this is a difference between Justin Fields and Tua. The same thing, the same reason, like, on our podcast, we were talking, there's a difference between Justin Fields and RG3. And just, like, guys like that, like, even Michael Vick. Like, those were smaller guys. And people forget, Michael Vick broke a lot. So when he when he ran, Michael Vick like like it was a, like a ragdoll sometimes when he was hit. Justin Fields is a lot bigger, so I, I agree with that. I I didn't expect to see the kind of size you, you get out of Justin Fields. Yeah, Fields is six three two twenty five. Uh, Josh yes. Allen six five two thirty seven. You know, yes, Allen just looks bigger, but yeah, you know, I think it was Tomlin who he, said he that, that like he remind he reminds him of Derrick Henry in the open field. Yeah, he did. He did say that. that, that. I, I I am. I hate Josh, Josh Allen and me. Oh, I, I'm not a Josh Allen fan whatsoever. Oh my God. I, I hope we get Buffalo in the playoffs again. I want Buffalo in the playoffs again to beat Josh Allen. I have wanted to beat Josh Allen like badly so much. See, I, I, I want, want him Josh to Allen. be like Dan Marino. Oh, no, I, I want, oh, to me, I, I, I want to, I want to play the best and prove I that still, we're as good as I feel we are. I still feel bad for him that, that Kansas City playoff loss because he did everything. You could ever right. ask a quarterback to win a game, and and his coach choked, his defense choked, and cost him a Super Bowl appearance. It, it, and he played out of his mind. Ah, right I'm okay. Legend I, of Mahomes, I, I, thirteen I seconds. Yeah, I mean, that's insane. crazy, insane. All right, to put a bow on this, uh, I just want to mention Carlos Waitman 
putting his ass off. They had this guy yeah. yes. three, four years ago. They cut him. They brought him in again when uh, Presley Harvin was struggling. Let him go again. If they would have just stuck with him, they wouldn't have had to pay, you know, uh, their punter a, a decent salary. They wouldn't have had to suffer with Presley Harvard for a couple of seasons. I'm glad he's finally getting his chance and he's putting well. Yeah. I always love it when a guy, you know, uh, make good story. Would I rather have Cameron Johnston? Yeah. But I'm yeah. okay. I, uh, but this guy is uh, playing pretty well. A lot of a lot of people when you talk about defensive football and old school football, smash mouth and field position, people overlook how important hunting is. Absolutely. And that 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 to me is I, you put it perfectly. That is that is a bow. That is a cherry on the top of this defense because I think we have we have enough like def- smart defensive veterans that they know how much help and benefit that special teams game, especially Boswell. Good, I mean, our special teams is a strength of this football team right now. Yeah. If they could just get a return guy, a punt returner to break a couple. I, I, know. I, I think, I, I think Calvin Austin is almost there. It look, I, it, it, he just has to stop doing a, a couple yeah. <laughs> of the, like fun little like magic jukes that he's trying to do. North and, and South, remember buddy. you're a really fast guy. Yeah. Pick a exactly. lane and go. So I, I, I think we're that, that, that dam hasn't broken yet. I think you ask Arthur Smith. He's still like, no, we're not, we're not there yet. So we're we're gonna see a lot better from this football team, and we're gonna get a lot more excited. I I tweeted out the next five games are all winnable. I agree. Colts, Cowboys, you know, it's it's you don't you don't they can run. They got the Giants. Yeah, uh, any anywhere from six and two to eight and zero oh is not just realistic; it's achievable. Like, yes, honestly, I agree. It, it, it is. It, it, it's not like anyone who is watching this that is a realistic football and Steeler fan should not feel like that's out of the realm of possibility right now. And w- which sounds very strange to say, but honestly, we yeah. we, we need that because we need every need single bit we need yes. going going into that. Uh, I don't care how good we are. How it's still going. We need to be as good as we can in the, in the first bit because it's the boss. In the, in the second bit, like the boss of the video game is waiting for us. I think yep. I I think as long as we and we usually play well at night, as long as we really take care of business against Dallas, the only game that scares me and I, I wouldn't even say scared. I just think it'll be a it's it's a play it's two playoff teams is the Jets game until you know until we see the Ravens. I mean. Yep, and and who knows what the Ravens are going to be at this point? I mean, let's face it: as bad as Dallas is, if Lamar doesn't get that first down, I, I I'd be willing to bet that Dallas wins that game. They were on the way to coming back for sure. A hundred, they were they knocking on the door for sure. They made that the, North has North has to, the Ravens the are blowing late. Prove to it, me why I have to should be scared of them. Ravens are blowing big leads consistently. I yeah. mean, that's. It's, and they're a running football team. That shouldn't yeah. be happening. Yeah, when you have Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson, you should when you get a lead, you should be able to hold it. I mean, it's especially big leads. And Derrick like Henry's not playing badly. Derrick Henry oh. is play. It, it, it's it's it's. I, I think I'm, I was on the Total Apex um, Sports Show a little bit uh, a week ago, and he asked me what's up with the Ravens, and I said it's if, if you're a Steeler fan, you know it's classic Ravens. It's we look good on paper and have no clue how to follow through on. Well, they uh, they haven't solved their receiving core either. The tight ends yeah. are a mess. Mark Andrews yeah. is not having a good Thank year. Thank you, Mark Andrews, for doing nothing. I, I you know, I, <laughs> no fantasy. Th- I just want to thank you for that. I really appreciate that, Mark Andrews. Woo! So did I, because I was playing him. Um, you know what? You can calm down, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so you you were worried about a trap game last week, Zach, and I messaged you. This is the quintessential Tomlin trap game. The Colts stink. This is like, I don't know, the Colts game last year when they lost and they shouldn't have. This is mm-hmm. this. Yeah, uh, feel a little different the about it. I feel, I feel a little different about it, and it's not completely because of what we just saw. But I'm kind of looking at all the different moving pieces and what it means. Is this this is going to be good news for Bob too? I think Tomlin is learning to delegate. Now that's what it feels like because Tomlin didn't suddenly learn how to be a better coach. Tomlin is was good at specific things, and I think what we're seeing is, like we said, 
the, the delegation to Arthur Smith to know how to put together the game plan, the, uh, what, what, whatever it is, that makes me feel a little better about this. This isn't going to be a Tomlin game. This is going to be a Steeler game. And I don't think that happened in a long time. And Tomlin being in charge of games has been the reason it's been trap games because he's gone and saying, you know what? I want to do random things in this game. Hey, it's the Raiders game. Hey, Ben, throw four picks. I want to see how we do in this game. It, I, the, the weirdness of Tomlin games, I'm hoping we're going to put that to bed this season. And it's what we all knew. It was a simple answer, which is delegate, Tomlin. People want to play for you. People want to be here just because of who you are. Just let mm-hmm. the coaches do their thing. And then fire Pat Meyer. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Second. So, but, but, so, so, but, but that's why I'm not as worried about this being a trap game. Um, I, now, that is still a possibility. And if there was ever one lurking, it's this one. But. And I, I know defense, Anthony Richardson has been terrible. And, and but, our defense, we shouldn't allow that to happen. I, and I do, uh, I do think with the way the defense is playing, it's an allow thing. This defense knows that they should go in and just shut these guys down. I mean, number one, you focus on Jonathan Taylor like he is, and you just make sure yeah. he does nothing and make Anthony Richardson fuck this game up, and you're fine. And then give that secondary like three picks. If he's, not- I can see that happening. I can see it. I can see us winning this game twenty-eight to three. I, I, I don't I, honestly. I don't see- I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't see this as the trap game. I think Vegas is the trap game because something about Minshew. Oh, that's a good one too. That's yeah. a good one too. Yeah. Yep. So, some about well, Minshew. What's the Raiders? What's the Raiders' rescue? What's their record? Are they two and one or one and two? I think they one, one and two, two. Now, right? Yeah. After one the two. bomb oh. at Cal against Carolina, yep. yeah. But the okay. the Raiders oh, have the Raiders have scary weapons. I'm not. I mean, yes, flukes can happen. The Colts could somehow, but with Richardson and quarterback, I don't see it unless Taylor runs wild. But. You start looking at Devontae Adams, Brock Bowers, Mayer. Yeah, Brock Bowers is playing well, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jacoby Meyer. I mean, there's some – the pass defense will be tested. And some about Minshew, we just – we can't get to that guy. Every time we play him, we can't get him. Is that wouldn't Vegas? that be a nice little romantic – It is in Vegas. It is. It is. And wouldn't that be a nice romantic, like, that kind of meet cute – Thing the Steelers go to Vegas and Mike Tomlin sees Devontae Adams from across the sideline, walks <laughs> Stop across. blinking and making eyes at him. Yeah, I like it exactly. Like it. The, 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 the next week, suddenly there's a trade announced. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> I, I, I just I, imagine it's Vegas, you know, you never know. I think, I think for the Raiders to consider that they got to go, they've got to drop to one and four, one and five. Uh, and if they do, then yeah, maybe you could get him for a pick. Yeah. yeah, I think it's conceivable. Um, yeah. He's he, we, as Steelers fans, we should be rooting hard against the Raiders because that's the one guy. Him and maybe Terry McLaurin. If you don't think Terry McLaurin's totally lost it, I mean, he's not that old, but he hasn't been playing very well. That's another guy that maybe will be available at the trade deadline and could make an impact on the Steelers. Those two guys. Yeah, yeah. I that's because Jaden what... Daniels only looks three yards down the field when he throws yeah. the ball. I think I mean, if you're looking at the wide receiver trade, you got to have two. You got to have two tiers of guys. You got to have guys that you really, really want. You know, would be awesome. And then you have guys we could probably get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I threw Ty- Tyreek Hill out there. I mean, I think the Dolphins are gonna suck. Well, that that would be fun. Um. So, who knows what they do? Do they trade for a quarterback, or do they start selling off parts and start thinking about next season? Who knows? Uh, well, I I think it depends because we the two is just on IR right now. He's and you know he's what what the conversations that he's having with people. You know the opinions he's going to get from people. Uh, we're not going to speculate about what you know people are saying to him, but you know the general topic of discussion. And if he comes back, and if Tua decides that that's it, that whatever you know stuff in the contract is enough, that the money he's going to get guaranteed it's enough, and he walks away, who knows? Maybe the Dolphins do go into wholesale mode and say, okay. We're in rebuild without expecting it. Everyone, sorry. And they just start piling up picks. It, it, it's not inconceivable. I, I don't wish that on Tua. I hope that he just, but you know, you never know. So it, it, it could suddenly go from a unrealistic pipe dream to, Hey, look, Tyreek's available. So you never know. And to, to, to Justin and, and, and Lakota, my brother, I am, I am sorry for suggesting that and breaking your hearts if that does occur. <laughs> But um, think about it. But if, just if, with Tua, you never know. 
if that scenario plays out, I mean, who's the guy that can bring him the most and is the most expendable? It's the 30 year old high priced wide receiver. That's the first guy that's going to go if they decide to, to rebuild. And I mean, what are the chances? If I'm the owner of Miami Dolphins, I never want to see two on the field again. I don't want to, I don't want that on my conscience. I don't they know. They just about, paid him 40 million though. I, I know, but. This guy's at some point, so... I, even in, even in football, it has to. Now, I, yet again, I say this, you know, making the best of most people in this world. <laughs> but it, there has even there even as an owner in football, there has to be a point where the money doesn't matter as much as the person does, yeah. right? <clears throat> I mean, there there there, there ha- it. I imagine it has to be, or you know what, that could play into it. Maybe if if Tua realizes that, you know. He hasn't been checked in on the way he thought he would have by the owners or whatever that that could play into it. Where it's like, you know what? Maybe the money is what matters, and he's going to look for an out. Because I, like I said, I don't know the the details in his contract about what is guaranteed and what isn't based on it's, injury. It's, I know I don't think there was a hundred like million question. guaranteed, is it? Well, uh, I think, yeah, I, I, yeah. But what's what's the stipulations on that? Yeah, but that. Yeah, the one thing to remember though is I don't I th- I think he signed the extension, but this is technically his fifth year option that he's playing under. But the contract um, still stands though, right? No matter what. I mean, he signed the contract. It's the the live the guaranteed money is the guaranteed money. Hard to say with a football <clears throat> contract. I know they were talking about insurance. 167 million is guaranteed, yeah. but I don't think there's any way like if I I remember hearing on the um, Mike Lombardi po- podcast that I can't, I don't know the exact numbers, but a significant amount of that is, is guaranteed even with injury. I think it's like 110 okay, of that yeah. 167 is what don't quote me on the exact dollars, but yeah. he doesn't get all of it, but he gets a, a, a chunk that would leave him comfortable for the rest of his life for sure. Oh, oh yeah, exactly. so absolutely. A, so a lot, a lot of this, like I said, not, but I don't want to truly speculate what's being said, but a lot of this, could be a financial discussion looking down the road, big picture saying, Hey, listen, we went into this to get um, the uh, a fund, ge- a generational wealth for this amount of time. If we leave, can- there, there's a lot of emotion and logistics that have to be balanced at the same time. So I don't wish that kind of a decision on anyone, but the ripples that could be felt around the entire league, because it's not just, there, there's some defensive stars on that, on, on that team too. It, if if they decide to go wholesale, then it's going to be yeah. very Madden like for like a week and a half in the NFL. It could it could it could very well be. I, I mean, if if I'm Miami though, I, I'm okay. You want to come back and play? All right. Here's the conditions: you have to wear a guardian cap, and you have to wear a neck roll. Yeah, but he. I'm surprised he didn't wear the guardian. I mean, yeah, I understand. If he there's had a one player in the league that should be wearing it for him, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean. I don't know that, that that's a whole other discussion that is just frustrating the hell out of me that don't that James Daniels is one of the few people to be wearing it. Yeah. It looks cool. I, I... Uh, even looks, it looks aside. If it saves you from concussions, then I don't know why you wouldn't a couple yeah. more, a couple more teams. Um, would you take Deontay Johnson back from the Owen three? No. Panthers. Nope. I might. I, I, I might. I, He's a free agent at the end of the season, right? They didn't extend they his contract, have... didn't they? I don't think they did, no. But no, you're right, this is his last year. Yeah. The 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 amount of and I don't want to there there would have to be a, a whole lot of forgiveness that I don't think has been earned yet. Yeah. Because remember, it's not just a talent thing. It's uh, we're, we're not the kind of team right now is so desperate that we're going to bring talent in regardless of the consequences to it. We have earned the right at three and zero with the kind of team and all that we're about to take our time and look at what we're going to be bringing in and the repercussions it's going to have on this football team. You bring Deontay Johnson in, you're just inviting issues that we are doing a lot to move away from. I mean, look, it, yeah. it, it's less than a week removed from the Broderick Jones situation, and honestly, how toxic I believe that could become, and it already seems like it's being resolved. Yeah, we don't want to yeah. mess with that kind of energy by bringing someone like Deontay Johnson back. 
Uh, the Titans are zero three. Do you, does DeAndre Hopkins do anything for you at this point in his career? Um, yes. I am a I am a big Hopkins fan at any point in his career. If you bring him back for a reasonable amount, I am fine with that. My my my, my brother in law Jake is a diehard Houston Texans fan and has nothing but good things to say about him. Okay. So definitely, I, I I want I would love to see that veteran leadership that he could impart on George Pickens. That would be wonderful because what DeAndre Hopkins was in Houston, George Pickens wants to be in Pittsburgh. I didn't yeah, even he, think about that. He was that such a great leader so in Houston, excited. they dumped him to Arizona for nothing. Not that Houston's great. Not that Houston's a lot of great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to leave you guys with this. Keep an eye on, on um, DJ Moore in Chicago. He is very unhappy. He's made some comments that he likes Fields and he didn't think these guys would be better than, than Justin Fields. Yeah. He may shoot his way out of Chicago. Just keep an eye on that situation. He is Which would be great. Right now, now, that's a guy I would love to have. DJ Moore is a no, I, very good wide receiver. Now, how, I'll how tell you, I, Justin Fields? Did they still, like, they're still good with each other? Yeah. He, he, he said on multiple occasions that none of these quarterbacks in the draft were better than Justin Fields, and they should have kept Justin Fields. He's been quoted on that uh, more than one occasion. Right. Like, Look at so, that, Bill Moore. The number one wide receiver free agent that – if we did target one, and I don't think we will, we'll draft one, is T. Higgins. T. Higgins yeah. is young. Yeah. He's he's very good. If we can Cincinnati, oh, I don't think we could get him because he's going to cost $40 million. But, yeah, yeah if, I could, if you could tell me we could get T. Higgins for $25, $30 million to go with Pickens, oh, yeah, that, I yeah. would like that. There's a lot of emotion I'm trying to take out of this because I, we're, we're we're advancing so rapidly as a team that I did not think by week three I would be thinking about which wide receiver would be the the X factor to get us to that Super Bowl. I did not think that yeah. this is so. I, I'm I'm trying to process and then think logistically <laughs> at the same time, and it's it's a lot to do. I don't think it's jumping the gun to think it though. I mean, oh no, I get it's, it. not at all. it's only week three, it's not at all, and this could fall apart before our eyes and we'd be saying what the hell are we talking about week three but man well, what we've seen from justin fields and this defense yeah number two yeah, wide we'll, receiver we'll, would go a long way in putting this team dj moore would not, really have to talk his way out of chicago yeah and that's I mean, that's a shoot my way out of town scenario for sure where he just you know goes rogue and we've seen it before wide receivers they're traumatized oh, the way, over the joey porter justin fields yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh if they traded us dj moore i mean their fan base might revolt I know. I know. We shouldn't take delight in other people's m- misfortune, but it, it, I, I love looking at, at, at the Kenny Pickett situation. I'm sorry. I think Kenny Pickett. I, I know. I know. It's random to bring up what we were talking about that. I, I, I just thought about the, the the guys that I do. I wouldn't ever want to see in a Pittsburgh uniform again. You brought up Deontay oh. Johnson. <laughs> That's where my mind went next. The joy oh, yeah. that we don't have to deal with that kind of a drama. I mean, if Pickett was the backup to to a guy like Fields, I, I would I wouldn't hate that. I mean, I I don't think <clears throat> I, I I mean he's a backup. He's, he's not going to play. Backup. He's, yeah, he's going to be a career backup. And, and exactly. if you thought he was going to be more than that, you were, I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know why they drafted him. Marino, that's why. Yeah, I mean, I've heard more than one person say it was it was the owner. The owner wanted him. The owner didn't want to be the guy that passed on another pick quarterback that blew up. Yeah, and and they draft him, which is bad, which is so bad that nobody, you know, kind of took Rooney aside and say, "Look, this kid doesn't have it." Yeah, this kid doesn't have it. I mean, you had Kevin Colbert, you had Mike Tomlin in that room. Somebody's got to speak up if, if if indeed was Rooney. All right, guys, I really appreciate you guys coming on last minute for me. Um, I wasn't sure Dave would even be able to give us an hour, and he did. Um, don't forget, guys, check out the Steel Rings podcast and video. There, you guys do what twice a week? Yep, Mondays and Fridays. Uh, yeah, Fridays too. So check Friday. them out. They had, they had a live one this afternoon. Um, again, guys, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you guys coming on, and thanks for everybody for listening. And thanks for listening to Steel Stank Straight Podcast, guys. Have a good one. Later.